And today we're going to be having a look at the testimony of Marcela Teresa Gonzalez. And she comes from Buenos Aires in Argentina. And this is to do with her experience of joining a prayer group of Padre Pio. Please do stay tuned to find out more. Hello friends of following Padre Pio. On this channel we bring to you a series of short talks on the incredible life of our great saint Padre Pio. He was a Capuchin friar, he was a mystic and he was a tremendous miracle worker. We ask you do stay tuned to find out more about Padre Pio and to find out what his intercession can do for you. And some good news is that our colleagues, uh, Mr. Jean Goyard and Mr. George Martin, they were both able to go to the, the monastery of St. Giovanni Rotundo, Padre Pio's monastery. And there they brought your prayer intentions before Padre Pio, before the very tomb of Padre Pio. And so, of course, this included all of the members, the protected child of Padre Pio patrons, all of those who've subscribed to our channel, and of course, all of those specifically who enrolled their mass prayer intentions during the Advent and the Christmas season. And it's a very special place, and we're hoping to hear more about their trip and their experiences and their impressions of St. Giovanni Rotundo, of the whole monastery and the devotion to Padre Pio today. And so that's a good reason to be part of this Padre Pio apostolate. To be part of it, you can like the video, share the video with your friends and colleagues, and make sure that you are subscribed to our channel. Now, in this story today, we see what happens when we become a member of a Padre Pio prayer group. And this is Marcela Gonzalez, her personal experience. And she comes from Buenos Aires in Argentina. She tells us that she was born in a Christian family and she was raised in a Christian family. Her parents were baptized in the Catholic Church. However, later they turned to Protestantism and she became very, very active within this. And so we know that the church in South America at one point it changed its focus, the Catholic Church that is, emphasizing more the social gospel, works only, class struggle and neglecting the whole spiritual element to some extent opening the door for the evangelicals, the faith-based faith, faith -based groups, and of course, without the priesthood and the purifying sacraments of the Catholic Church. So they were able to make tremendous inroads there, and she grew up within this, these other churches. And she says she prayed diligently, however. And then at the age of 23, she had this opportunity to go to Italy and to visit the shrine of the great Saint Francis of Assisi. And so shortly before that, however, she had felt an irresistible call within her heart to approach, approach the Virgin Mary. And so slowly, little by little, she was led towards the Catholic Church. And she became Catholic and she got married in the Catholic Church. And she tells us that her children were raised in the same faith. And she said it was because she felt that they should be brought up within the framework, that there should be this family cohesion. And then Marcella tells us as well that three years ago, she had been invited to join a Padre Pio prayer group. And that was at the Basilica of Socorro. And so she did. And she says since then, her soul has been totally changed. And this is the sort of thing she did, they did at this prayer group. They would gather together and they'd pray to Padre Pio for the health, this was the first instance, of Pedro. And he was a nine-year-old boy and he had been admitted to the Garahan Hospital. And he had been diagnosed now with something very, very serious. Serious condition. And after 20 days, the doctors were absolutely astonished because he was discharged, completely cured. So they saw this miracle happen. And thereafter, I asked Padre Pio also to help a, a friend of my sister-in-law. And this friend of her sister-in-law was pregnant and she was also suffering from breast cancer at the same time. And so the doctors had advised her now to have an abortion, to terminate the child within her, within her womb. But she refused. She's Catholic now. She refused. She couldn't have an abortion. And so as with Pedro, we all prayed for her, prayed together in the prayer group. And then in one day, they also invited her to have a special blessing with one of Padre Pio's gloves. And this was in one of the central parishes. 
Now, we all know within the church we have this practice of relics, the relic of Padre Pio. But we know it comes from the New Testament. And in Acts 19, I'm just quoting from Acts 19, so that even the handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him, that is St. Peter, they were taken to the sick and their illnesses were then cured and the evil spirits left them. And so this practice of relics comes from way, way back from the apostles' times. And then shortly thereafter, this friend of her sister-in-law, she gave birth to her son. She breastfed the son for three months. And thereafter, she went and she sought treatment now for her, her breast cancer. But she had been completely cured. And so that is a second miracle from their prayer group. And she says she has heard of numerous testimonies of healings, of conversions, of tremendous spir spiritual growth all through the intercession of Padre Pio. She says, starting with herself, today I am actively involved in the formation of the, the prayer groups of Padre Pio. So that's, of course, Marcella. And we already have 17 prayer groups, and one of them is virtual as well. And they're all connected to the International Center of Prayer Groups of in San Giovanni Rotundo itself. She says, I never tire of encouraging my brothers to join them if they want to. And if they do, then their lives will change forever for the better. And so we've seen in today's talk these miracles of Padre Pio's prayer groups. So perhaps you should pray about it, and if you feel a calling, then join one of these Padre Pio prayer groups in your area, or you could start one in your area too. And if you've enjoyed today's talk, then on the next talk, we're going to be looking at the perfume of Padre Pio. What is it? So please do join us for that video so that you don't miss out. And just a quick word of encouragement to join us in our Padre Pio apostolate and do enroll your Mass prayer intentions because we have a Mass every Friday dedicated to Padre Pio. And you can just see the video on the end screen how to enroll your Mass prayer intentions. Please do continue watching. We have some tremendous videos on the end screen. Oh.